Look at this. I've bought a new Mac and I didn't want to. Uh, got to tell you this, got to. Uh, this Mac Mini was made in Shenzhen, I think that's how you pronounce it, in China, which it turns out is 6,002 miles away from me. UPS managed the 6,000 brilliantly, but the last two, hello. And William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which is for writers like you and me, who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. I do subscribe if you're a writer, because we have so much to talk about. <clears throat> Usually, though, what we talk about, it can be quite specific. I mean, writing tools that help you do this or devices that help you do the other. Yeah, we will have that this time, too. Um, as I record this part, I'm planning to film over a couple of weeks to see what happens with this Mac Mini. It's April the 1st, 2021, and this is an Apple Silicon Mac Mini. They've been out now for five or six months. And, you know, there's already been waves of reviews and YouTube videos every one of which says this is incredibly fast and great but none of them say anything for writers i mean it's great that video editing is apparently so much faster that will help me but you and i are writers but there's only so fast we can type isn't there so i'm worried that i'm going to find this isn't the spectacular improvement it's promised and i know for certain i'm going to find it isn't a macbook pro that's what I actually wanted, and that's what I was saving up to buy. And in a few months when I'd saved enough, I was figuring that Apple is probably going to have released the expected 14-inch MacBook Pro, and that was ideal for me. However, I've had so many problems recently that I've given in and bought this. It's, I'm not expecting you to play violin music. In fact, I've just bought myself a new Mac, but it was a big deal. For me. It a, it's a big concern, because I've been here before. In 2015, I did not want to buy an iPhone 6. I had no interest in it. I had certainly no money to just casually throw away at something when I already had an iPhone 5 that I adored. But then that iPhone 5 broke. I mean, out of warranty, really rare. It just weeks of failures and then driving to a meeting, it died completely, irrevocably. I had to guess the rest of the route to that meeting. I also had to have a phone. So instead of getting to pick carefully and enjoy debating any issues or something. I left the meeting, went to an Apple store, asked what the cheapest iPhone was. That'll do, thank you very much. Can I pay on installments? That's nice. Bought the iPhone 6, headed straight back out to the next meeting and, and practically resented that phone for the next several years. I should say that I am still using it. I, this microphone here, it's usually plugged into that same iPhone 6 in my pocket or somewhere. But compare that to my, my current phone, the iPhone 12 Pro, much more expensive, actually. But I enjoyed picking the right one. And now I actually I adore it far more than even that iPhone 5. I hold my iPhone 12 Pro for the sake of holding it. It's like a talisman as much as a phone. And now there's this. A Mac Mini that I'm sure is great, but that I didn't want to buy. And I said I've been having problems. Uh, the core of it is that really I've been overstressing my old Mac Mini. And the core of that is because at the end of 2018, when I bought that one, I got it wrong. So it's very late 2018. My then six-year-old iMac is dying. My entire livelihood depends on a Mac. And, you know, as well as the dying one, there's a new one out. The 2018 Mac Mini. I bought it and it is great. I am not knocking Mac Minis as a, as a species, if you like. But what I got wrong was I bought the cheapest version. Uh, that meant the least amount of RAM and the smallest storage capacity that was available at the time. Uh, in about the last six months or so, that RAM part has been biting me. The Mac has slowed down. I've had error messages. I've had freezes and, and crashes. The smallest storage space issue, though, that bit me twice a day from the very start. At least very many times a week, I would, I would have to go find something to delete off the Mac in order to just carry on working. Um, a friend sent me this. Actually, take a look at this. It's a 500 gigabyte external drive. And my Mac Mini has actually been booting off that, the external drive, instead of its own drive ever since. 
500 gigabytes was a lifesaver. That difference meant that the Mac had enough that enough space that I could I could forget about it running out of room every hour. Uh, changed everything. It's still not enough uh, for doing lots of video editing. Uh, hence, you know, every backup drive I've ever had is plugged into this thing, uh, and also this camera it tends to run a bit hot. Um, I should say I name my drives, my discs after places in New York. Drives need names. We're not like PC owners with Z drives or something. You need to be able to tell them apart. I like New York a lot. It works for me. So this external drive shows up on my Mac as Strawberry Fields. Uh, that one, that gets quite hot by the way. The Mac internal drive, that's called Hudson Yards and that gets scalding hot. Recently, I, late in every afternoon, maybe four o'clock-ish or so, possibly the overheating, possibly the running out of RAM, and I'm still running out of space, or something goes on, whatever it is, it all slows down. I can be in the middle of trying to save a document and the Mac will suddenly take minutes to even bring up the save dialog box. Not an exaggeration, minutes, four to six minutes. Fantastically frustrating. You try to leave that app and go to another app, for example, to tell an editor that there's a bit of a delay <laughs> and that just locks up too. If there's a Zoom call going on or videos, they are stuttering and they are dying and the Mac is crashing and rebooting. Really. So last week, this was all happening. It, it felt like it was worse than ever. Plus, I was on a deadline and I, I could not achieve the simplest job, which was a bit of a problem because at that very moment, I was actually also juggling three or four actually rather big jobs. What's the strongest word we can say here? Please imagine that word followed by it. This is my job. I figure this is my business. My entire livelihood depends on a Mac. So I ordered a new Mac. Not the MacBook Pro that I wanted, that I was saving up for. I couldn't stretch to that. But instead, a new Apple Silicon Mac Mini. And I shouldn't have done this, but I couldn't face hitting the same problems all over again. So I bought this new Mac Mini uh, with uh, the maximum 16 gigabytes of RAM that you can get instead of the cheapest minimum. And I bought it with two terabytes of internal storage instead of 128 gigabytes or whatever it was I had before. You can tell me that was stupid, actually, because uh, very reasonably you can point out it would cost less to buy a two terabyte, another external drive that's two terabytes, boot off that onto it. You'd be right. But you just, you weren't here for the frustrations. Right or wrong then, I'm out a lot of money that I could, I mean, we were writers. We can't casually throw this stuff away. But the end result is I've replaced my Mac Mini with a Mac Mini. I know I won't get those old frustrations and that's got to be worth uh, a lot. But typing on the old Mac Mini versus typing on the new one, will I even notice this amazing speed difference that everyone promises? Today, on April the 1st, it's still in the drink wrapping. I don't know, and actually, I can't begin to find out yet because I'm on a deadline and I need to get back to that. That was horrible. No, stop, stop. Look, this is just you and me talking here. I am not going to make you one of those YouTube videos that says, don't buy a Mac until you've seen this, or, or one of those, I'm seeing a lot of these, my biggest regret in buying the new Mac Mini, where after half an hour of talking, it turns out that what they regret is the colour or something. What you just saw, uh, the despair, the word horrendous, and the quite clearly hours spent doing it all, that was real. That was true. Moving to the new Mac was awful because of one thing. Whenever you get a new Mac, you can set it up as being you know, completely new and just install the apps you use as you need them, as you get to them. Or you can use uh, what Apple calls Migration Assistant, a utility that moves all your apps and documents and settings from the old Mac over to the new one. I will never use Migration Assistant again. That was what was horrendous. For some reason, just Getting the new and the old Macs to recognise that they the other existed was murderous. It was like using a PC. You know, you go through 
countless steps and it doesn't work. So you go through them again and again and suddenly for no clear reason it does work and somehow we're supposed to feel grateful. Then actually it takes hours, when it finally works, it takes hours to transfer the apps, the documents, the settings. But you know, fortunately, it was one in the morning, maybe two, when it finally started working. So I could just go to bed and sleeplessly wonder if it was all doing it and would be ready for me in the morning. Actually around 5 a.m. I peaked and it was working. So if you and I were talking today about this migration assistance system, then, well, this would no longer be a family show. And I would be vowing that neither of us would use this thing again. But instead, it's about Apple Silicon for writers. And wait, hang on, uh, it's 8 a.m. you just after. On April 15th, 2021, and my summary is, thank God I bought Apple Silicon. It does make a difference to your type of speed, it really does. It's subtle, in fact, I'll show you how subtle a difference it is, but it feels so enormously better faster. Here's writing on the Mac Mini. On the left, my old Intel Mac uh, Mini, and on the right, my new Apple Silicon one. Actually, I think you can see right away that I'm writing faster on the new one, but uh, let's go in closer. Let's see more. Now, that's the new Apple Silicon Mac Mini on the top, the old Intel one on the bottom. And here's the thing I do a lot. I need to make some text into a link in this article, so I've already copied the link. Now, I cut the text, type a trigger phrase, and wallop, it's all done. I don't know about you, but I can't really see a difference between the two Macs on that. But you don't know about me. I can feel the difference. People keep telling me before I bought this that uh, Apple Silicon Macs feel snappy, and, and they're right. They're so right, though, that I think it's more than that. Apple Silicon Macs are frisky. How's this for an accidental? Example. Uh, to show you that typing, I've said to record the screen. So on the old Intel Mac that I have, I was writing in drafts five, plus I was using a screen recorder called ScreenFlow to capture the screen. I think at the same time there was also Safari was open, Slack, one password, OmniFocus, it's always OmniFocus is open. Uh, the calendar, fantastic, or text, is, maybe a couple of, uh, or two more, I can't remember. But what I can remember is that I let it record the screen as I wrote for as long as I could bear then I switched off ScreenFlow after a few minutes. The Mac was getting a wee bit stressed with all this going on. So removing one app that was doing a lot of work, that was essential, that made a difference. Plus, the ScreenFlow records in its own video format, uh, whatever that is, and I needed that uh, screen recording in a form that I could show you. That means exporting, and, and that's actually a slow job. I'm not knocking ScreenFlow, just it has to do a lot in order to export a long video and I could not afford the time then for it to do that and slow down the Mac while I was on a writing deadline. So I did not export the screen recording then. I left it there until the end of the day, the end of all of that day's deadlines and then I set it going while I walked away and ate. Compare that to doing exactly the same thing on the new Apple Silicon Mac. In fact, I actually slightly more. I know I had more apps open but yeah broadly the same thing. There was none of this recording for as long as I could bear, not this time. Instead, I forgot the Mac was doing this. I forgot for an hour and a half. And then I did have ScreenFlow export the footage while I carried on to that day's deadlines because I could. Because I could set that running and forget about it, completely forget about it until I needed the footage. You forget what it's doing because you don't have to remember, you don't have to think about it. What you do think about is your writing. During that 90 minutes, I was completely focused on the writing and it was as if there was nothing else going on in, in the world or on my new Mac. Uh, when I, uh, you know, needs reference something, uh, those links I needed. It's not like I was suddenly having to break concentration and wait to get the link from Safari. It's just, oh, need a link, done. Got it, over there, straight back, done. Actually, I said I wasn't going to talk about video editing, that this is all about Apple Silicon for writers, and it is, but you do let me say this, because it's just amazing. Uh, there's this thing, doesn't matter what it is, a certain thing I do in Final Cut Pro when I'm preparing to talk to you, it takes a couple of minutes, yeah? I mean, nothing worth speaking of, just a couple of minutes, and then, I, I yeah, I get on with something else, scratch my nose, whatever. On Apple Silicon, it did this thing before I could sit back in my chair. And uh, there was a 58 case uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, with uh, five tips for pages. And 
That was the first one uh, that I did entirely on the new Mac. It was exhausting because for the first time ever, I could not keep up with my Mac. Okay, if you want to talk about problems with Apple Silicon, well then, this is the worst. Entire mugs of tea have gone cold. Because I'd reach out and the Mac... Oh, it's done it. Yeah, okay, yeah, I've done it. Uh, there is also, in serial seriousness, I have a large monitor. Out of the box, this new iMac Mini wouldn't fully use it. I mean, it worked, filled the screen, but at a low resolution, so everything was big. I had to buy a new cable, a display port to USB-C one, and that cost me £20, or about $30. Also, even with this new cable, the Mac doesn't see the monitor in the morning. I have to pull the cable out, put it back in again. I don't know why, and it is a pain. But actually, I had something very similar with the old Mac. So. Uh, speaking of plugging things in and out, uh, there is a general criticism that Apple Silicon Mac Minis have too few ports on the back. And yep, that is true. I agree with that. I have been swapping things in and out and losing track, really. Like, so, uh, why isn't my Zoom compared? Oh, yeah, OK. Yeah, stuff. Uh, next, software. I did have to buy some. I paid about th uh, £30, I think it was, something like $40 to upgrade sc screen flow, that screen recording thing, to work at all on the new Mac. That was the only software expense, and actually part of me was almost glad to do it, because as I really like screen flow for recording the Mac and iOS screens, but version 8 that I've been using for ages has been bugging me constantly to upgrade to version 9, so much so that I was sufficiently irritated that I thought I'm never going to do it, never going to do it. And then the new Mac comes along and needs it, so yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, also, in some apps, I had to uh, re-enter license details. There were some others where I had to deregister on the old Mac before I could register them on the new, and actually I'm still working through those. More seriously, perhaps, uh, there are apps that have not been updated to work fully with Apple Silicon. Yeah, I mean, but right now, actually, that doesn't matter, because Apple Silicon can pretend to be an old Intel Mac and do it so well, so fast, that you don't notice. It's not as quick as it uh, a native Apple Silicon app would be, but as fast as it used to be, at least. First time you do you open any of those apps, you're prompted to download a thing called Rosetta 2. You go, OK, it downloads. You never think about it again, not for any app, never. I don't know why Rosetta 2 is not just on the Mac already, but I do know that it isn't going to be there forever. It's going to go away. I don't know when, but in the next couple of years, it will it will vanish. Uh, the developers at Evernote, by the way, told me that they have no plans to make a native Apple Silicon Mac a version of their Evernote note-taking app. Um, if you use Evernote, you might like to let them know that someday in the next couple of years, Rosetta 2 is going to go away. Their Mac version won't run on a Mac anymore, and they're going to have a very, very bad morning. Of course, I just see that as a reason not to stick with Evernote. Um, I think it's fair to say that I spent too much money on this Mac Mini, but I, what it's done is it's got get me one that's completely, I mean, completely eradicated all of the problems I was having before. They're just gone. It's such a relief. I'm weeks in now, and every minute I'm using this new Mac, I'm glad I've got it. And that most definitely includes when I'm writing. I never felt that the old Mac was slowing me down, but I now I do feel all the time that my new Mac is speeding me up. I should say, um, I haven't gone back to the old Mac as much as I expected, as much as I planned to, as much as actually I probably should in order to compare them so that we can talk about it, but the, the reason I haven't gone back much is because it's so hard to leave the new one. Okay? On the odd occasion when I've needed to go back, when I've had to start up the old one, I, I have been immediately conscious that starting up takes forever. And also that my typing, my writing, it feels slowed, feels held back, like something is retarding the speed. Um, you saw the two side by side, and I don't think you saw a difference, but use it and you really do. I cannot tell you the relief. Obviously, I wasn't kidding about fearing I'd spent all this money and that it would fix problems, but I wouldn't feel the difference. Now I feel the difference so much, I wish I'd bought this months ago, so yes. Apple Silicon, frisky Apple Silicon, is great for writers. I do still want a MacBook Pro, but anyway. No. Uh, one last thing, just for completeness. I did not spend days trying to pick the name for my drive, the New York place name that I use to distinguish between the different drives, the different Macs on the network, but I may, I may have spent hours. 
contenders were The Vessel, it's the enormous copper artist station in Hudson Yards in Manhattan, uh, Highline, or in a slight departure, the one I picked. This Mac now shows up in the Finder and my network as Midtown Raw. Yes, because it's fast, actually also because it's quiet, but also because of this. Suzanne Vega with New York is a woman. It did take a day, by the way, before I noticed that my Mac had auto-corrected Midtown Raw into Midtown Road. Anyway, thanks for watching this edition of 50 Gates. I feel like we've lived through this transfer together. Do subscribe if you're a writer who uses Macs, iPhones and iPads, but more importantly, yeah, take care of yourself, eh? And I'll see you soon.